Hey guys, Dan Frigga, Let's Sexy Buell Podcast. Uh, we've run into some flag issues in the last couple weeks with our YouTube content. Uh, so we've been moving some of that content over to Dan Frigga, Let YouTube. The Sexy People Podcast YouTube is in peril uh, as we've been putting links in there that have now become illegal in the minds of YouTube. Uh, check us out back over at youtube.com slash Dan Frigolette, and we'll keep putting the full episodes there. Um, stay tuned right now for the part one of Lexi Luna on the Sexy People podcast. Sexy People podcast. I'm Dan Frigolette. I'm here with Lexi Luna. Thank you for being my first, no, that's not even true. I was going to say my first re in person interview. After the pandemic, but that's not true. This is just the closest I've been to a human being <laughs> the after the pandemic. Uh, so thank you for being here. Of course. I love hanging out with you. You were like one of my first uh, major interviews in this thing. It's been like three years. It's been way more than three years. It's been it's been a year it's and a half. It's been like five years. It's been <laughs> one year, um, and you've done fantastic. We're not old. We're... I'm not old. So I'm not years. saying you're old, but look at us all. Like, look at your leg right now on right? this couch. Too. So I'm trying to like embrace. So all I, so I got fat. That's Life what happened. The, the people know theoretically that I've gotten ill and fat. But so ill and fat. Ill and fat. I'm unwell. Um, I'm unwell. And so I have calves. I still have calves. Oh, so yeah, I'm, I'm wearing really calf pants. Look at these calves. These are my calf yeah, pants. Look at these. Mm. Right. And so these are. And then I've been wearing. What do they call them? They call them hoochie daddy uh, shorts. What are hoochie daddy? Hoochie daddy shorts. shorts. Are like um, three to five inch inseam shorts. They're usually cotton, so you can show a lot of bulge. Do not show. Don't know. That's what I'm stop. doing. Stop that. That's what I'm doing. Stop it. Why? That's nobody needs to see bulge. First of all, unless they want to see bulge. That's, that's like right. An Don't look thing. That. It's an at-home thing. No, I was in Florida. I had oh, to wear the Hoochie Daddy shorts. that's different. Oh! Okay, if you're in Florida, yeah, anything goes down there. But I also, see. it's so fucking hot that I do not blame you. That's true. I've lived in Florida twice now in two yeah. different areas, and it is just fucking hot. And where are you... Are we allowed to cuss on this? I'm sorry. No, absolutely not. We're talking about pornography. You can please cuss. Um, <laughs> I just want to make sure so you don't get, like, booted off of food. I'm already, YouTube. I'm I know. already <laughs> did. That's why we had to change the name of the podcast. That's why we changed the name. <laughs> um... You said cuss. That's like the cutest shit I've ever heard. Cuss, yeah. Can we cuss here? Can we cuss it's here? so um, <laughs> it's so like 1994. Well, yeah, I'm a 90s, okay 90s person. Are you a 90s person? I was born in '89. I'm 33. You know, it's. You give your full stats out? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. That's great. I'm a milf, honey. So we are in a we are in a weird place, right? So like, I was trying. I was telling you guys one of the reasons I started this podcast was that I met a person trying to exit porn, right when I got to New York. And they were having the worst time. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a Mia Khalifa. There wasn't a um, Lisa Ann. There wasn't these people that like used their their fame to then inform a new career. Right. So she was trying to like work in accounting at like Macy's, and they were like, "Nope, you can't do it." No, you can't do that. Um, and so she just wanted to get out of her own shadow. So, what do you feel about? Um, I don't want to. I don't want to retire you. Well, how do you, what do you feel about like 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 after career stuff, or are you gonna be able to do this? And like, can you? Are we at a place where you can actually like um, fuck until you die on camera? Are we there? Oh my God, I don't think I want to. Do that. <laughs> I will perform as long as the fans want to see me perform. That's always been my like thing. Is yeah. That I'll do this as long as people aren't like, God, she's old. Well, <laughs> I, I Maybe she should stop fucking for a living. How dare she? How dare she um, show her saggy titties? <laughs> I don't know how to say this without sounding completely pervy. Mm -hmm. I'm missing the people that were my age that have that have left. Mm -hmm. So the people that, that were my age did this thing. Thirty nine. They did this thing. Uh, depending unless unless like MTV's watching and then I'm twenty seven. Um, <laughs> so they did this thing. They'll never hire you in your thirties. No, this is where I was. Literally, I had to take I had to take my age back a couple of years because I was auditioning for stuff mm -hmm. for MTV and I was like thirty two and they were like, "Listen, this is a network of 20s. And I was like, "Fuck you, D. Ray Davis is fifty two years old, yeah. right?" And they're like, "He's black. It's different." Like, listen. Um, so what I was saying was, all the people that thirty nine. I'm gonna I'm gonna name names. Do it. Okay, so oh, let's okay. So I'll mention my friends. So like people like Alexis Fox, mm -hmm. right? Of course. She's stayed Status in the business. Milk. Status milk. She stayed in the business, and as and as a result, she's like legacy, like veteran, etc. Yeah, absolutely. Right, and that's the first class of of person my age group that stayed past mm -hmm. this mark. Oh wow. Katie Morgan, whatever. Yeah, yeah. All the people before that, like right when they got to that mark, they like they were like they were like 
35, and they were like, we should leave. We should do something else. They're trying to cram them into MILF, and then they were like, we have to just go start a family in Arizona and, like, change your name. So, like, there's all these vacant accounts, like Sheena Shaw and Rachel Rocks, and most people have been making money with OnlyFans that are not. Right. And I still would love to see them. I would love to see all the people that are my age. I, I'll, I'll be happy to watch Alexis Fox... Um, into her 60s because I'll be 60 I'll still be you your fan okay so I saw this meme the other day and it had a picture of a young guy watching MILF porn and an older guy watching MILF Great. porn and it said uh, <laughs> the first one said watching MILF porn because it's a fetish and the second one said watching MILF porn because it's age appropriate <laughs> that's, that's that's what I'm talking about I'm at that age I'm at the age where I'm 39 so I can date someone my age uh, their mother or their daughter. Like, I'm in that yeah, sweet, sweet spot. spot. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but so, I really do. I really, really like to, yeah, to have access to, like, it's weird if you're if you're 20 and you're looking for 80-year-old porn. But if you're 80, why, you want 80-year-old porn. Yeah. Or maybe, what's the cutoff, do you think? I don't know. This is such, a, what's the female such an cutoff? interesting talk, talking yeah. point here. I don't know how we got here. I don't. I think you took us here because yeah, you're I'm feeling happy. some certain way about yeah, your age. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> I stopped working. It's over for me. Oh, fuck me. Um, Let me sit up so I can, I can see something. So, I don't know. There's got to be an age. There's got to be an age where it's like, that's fine. Because everything is arbitrary. Right? 18, being able to have sex 16, 17, 18, that's arbitrary. Well, we state don't talk state. about that until we're 18. State by state. And then, so then what's the cutoff? What's the cutoff where you can't have sex that we know about anymore? Let's make it right now. You know, I 72. don't think there is one because there are people like Nina Hartley who are still... How old is Nina Hartley? 60s. 60s. Yeah. You know, she's still killing it. Right. Ciela D'Angelo, also killing it. Okay. You know, but, you know, I, I don't think that there's... That we've done porn in a way that is... There is an age cutoff yet because Nina Hartley's not there yet. Yeah. You know, I think Nina Hartley and, and Sally D'Angelo will lead the way. And it, and it really it comes down to the fact that, like, now that you have... Now that you're in touch with your fans, mm -hmm. and there's not other people yeah. between you and them, yeah. you can it's decide different. on your own what the hell to do next. But Absolutely. there was pressure. There was definitely pressure, evidenced by the woman that I met, and then all of my favorite one people leaving. Yeah. That, like, you get to, like, you're, like, 35, and you're like, I gotta go away. Well, I think that's also, like, your bio biological clock ticking. Maybe. And, you know, just the human part of us, because... Are people too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sexy. And they're so, also sexy people. so it just—I think it just depends on what your personal goals are. And my personal goals are to be in this industry as long as I can, yeah. on any any end of the industry, whether it's behind the camera, in front of the camera, on OnlyFans. You know, who knows what's going to come after OnlyFans? Because there will be something after this. Yeah, we should work on that. Yeah, get that mind. Um, well, so what we need to do, and this is something that, that I was I was involved in in New Hampshire, was to trying to. Um, decriminalize aspects of sex work. Mm -hmm. That will lead the way for things like OnlyFans not trying to overnight deplatform us. Right. Yeah. They're like, oh, we need we need funding. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna get rid of all. We porn gotta stars. change what we're doing. And then they're doing. like, oh, we're sorry, we're sorry, My we're bad. cycling back on this because we had a lot of kickback. Yeah. Yeah. Like they lost they lost probably uh, multi million dollars in a weekend. Right. There were there were a lot of people who spoke out, and I think that they really saw the creator community and were like, okay, we see you. And we should not do this to you. I like that and perspective. I appreciate that OnlyFans. Thank you so much. I'm going to say that that's, that that's what happened. Yeah. I'm much more pessimistic about everything. I know. That's why you're a comedian. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's like we see, the, we see the darkest of the world and we're like, no, no, that's what I love. Yeah. I love how And we need comedians in our lives because I don't want to be in that dark, deep place. But I'll we'll let you there. be in we'll there. We'll go there. So like, there's videos that I can't release of me and a buddy. We're in a car, we're doing a podcast, it's, it's comedian, comedian, it's why I had to stop doing comedian, comedian podcasts. Mm -hmm. It's because we just talked about suicide for like four hours. Right, yeah, no, 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 no one wants to watch that. Nobody wants that. Like after 20 minutes, the, the people are like, this is, this is 19 minutes too long. <laughs> um, what was I going to ask you? I wanted to ask you a thing, and I don't remember what it is, because I'm easily distracted. Maybe polyamory is the topic. Okay, I like that. So I read an article in the New York Times that upset me. There was a person who was a single person, and they were like, so I had a, uh, because of the podcast, People try and call me when stuff comes out in, in mainstream media. And like, mm -hmm. so this girl's trying to date me, and she was like, "Hey, I saw this article. Is this what it is?" And I was like, "Not really." It was just like a girl who wrote an article about being single, and on, she's on partner, and she's single. She's fucking everybody, and good for her. Dude, but I didn't think that that was Polly. So I, I, I poly. have trouble as a cis male, um, like binary piece of shit. Um, understanding new aspects of the world. So what 
What is it to be poly and on partner? And how does that work? Why, what's, is it the lifestyle? What's the thing that makes you poly if, you, if you're not like no. involved in, in a relationship? Yeah. Yeah. So I think just the ability and the openness to want to have a relationship with multiple people. And, and it's more than just a relationship. It's, it's, a, it's an emotional relationship where maybe you're in love with this person or maybe you're not. And that's okay. And there's no judgment about the love piece, but it's the emotional investment in wanting that person to do well and wanting to make the relationship better. But also accepting that you and or that other person will have other partners. And that you might love those partners too. How do you explain to somebody that you love them and another person at the same time? This seems to be a concept people can't handle. It is. It's tricky because you really don't know it until you feel it. And that's the shittiest answer. But when you love somebody and then when you find somebody else that you're like, oh, I feel like I'm cheating on this person because I also have strong emotional feelings for this other person. If you haven't communicated that and if that isn't your definition of cheating in that relationship, then... I can kind of understand how that emotion would like really take the better of you. But at the same time, if you communicate your, your needs and your desires effectively with the partners that you currently have, that's where the polyamory part comes in. Because if that other partner is okay with you also loving somebody else. Yeah. And, you know, to me, it's, it's one of those things where it's kind of crazy to expect one person to be everything for you in a relationship. And that's the poly uh, hinge. Yes, that's is the hinge. That, is that you have to, part of this whole thing is accepting somebody for who they are. And not getting mad about their flaws and not trying to change them. Exactly. And so if there's a piece of you that doesn't line up with a piece of another person, then Polly says, well, then go find the thing that will enrich this piece that you're missing. Right. But doing it ethically and, you know, morally and... and Honestly. Honest non-monogamy is much better than, you know, it's like being the ethical slut. There's no dudes, yeah, dudes love to just... And I've met women uh, in, in, in my um, periods of dating toxically uh, who... <laughs> Who want to be poly, but don't want it to be open. They want they want you to be locked down, and they want to go do the thing. So they're just cheating, and that's, that's and that enriches yes. everything. Yes, so that's different. And there's just so many different types of relationships when it comes to that kind of thing. Sorry, I'm like putting my hand Slap right here, but we're so awkwardly next to each other. Here's my tiny question. little couch. Yeah, yeah, this is this is a porn couch for sure. <laughs> This is a, yes. This is such so like Not a, quite the casting couch. It's like an audition it. couch, yeah. Because well, I, mean, I shouldn't be in the shot if that was the, if the casting couch. Yeah, you'd be over there yeah. behind the camera. And then, yeah, just be like my feet and my butt or whatever. And so, is there a finite amount of love? I guess that's the thing. That's the question Very when it comes good to point. loving I think, other people. I think humans have an unde undefined part of love. Um, it's, you know, you, you what you really have is... A defined amount of time you can't give enough time to two partners as you can to one partner but you know if, if one partner is fulfilling all your needs except maybe a sexual need then you find that sexual need with somebody else but being open and honest is what keeps it polyamorous and what keeps it open and you know if you fall in love with that person because of the sexual need that they're giving that's not disingenuous and that's not cheating but as long as the lines of communication are open, think about it as if you have a new puppy and an older puppy. The older puppy, you loved him. You, you gave him you know, so, such a good life. And now you have a new puppy who's coming into the relationship. You don't have enough time for the old puppy, but you, you're splitting the, the amount of time that you have between the two. So neither one is getting your full attention, but they both the puppies also have each other. I like the analogy because, because what, it, what it comes down to is like, my dog's potty trained. Mm -hmm. But now I got to spend all this time making this other dog understand what the expectations are, and so yeah. that puppy more than I need it. I, that puppy needs my help to figure out how to like be a part of this thing or how to be a part of this family. And but it is, but but then this is the hard part. How does old puppy not get jealous? Yeah, jealousy is a really tricky part, and you know jealousy is something that makes us human, and we feel these emotions, and those emotions are very valid. And if you feel jealous then that is how you feel and it's very real to you. But if the other partner is like, well, you shouldn't be jealous because I love you, that's not enough, right? Yeah. And it, it takes a lot of communication. Having the open lines of communication and being willing to accept what your partner is telling you is really important. Right. Because if you say, well, you shouldn't be jealous because I love you too, that might not be enough to satiate that person and to say, okay, well, but what about when you don't love me? Right. You know, and it's, it's one of those things that's really hard to, to put in words, but... 
opening the lines of communication between your partners is what's going to make the relationship successful. Any relationship, not just a polyamorous one. I'm because I'm stuck. So I might not. I I might could. Um, I might could. It's a Texas thing. Might like could. It. I might <laughs> could. I might could be in a relationship that's that's poly poly open. I have no problem with that. But I, I feel like it'd be harder. It's harder for me to find a partner that's in that space, yeah. especially now, or sure. especially because I'm not I'm not communicating in the best way. But I would like uh, my monogamous partner to still not feel jealous. So I want the aspects of poly and the understanding, mm -hmm. because what happens is when you have a monogamous person who's jealous, then everything is up for grabs. So like, why did that bagel lady give you more yeah. cream cheese? Like, you can't go to that bitch anymore. <laughs> and it's just like, none of, and... Did you flirt with her when I wasn't around? Yeah. Did you well, cheat on why, me by yeah. flirting with the bagel lady? Why did the bagel lady just, why does she know your order? I know. Right. Like, because I'm here five times a week. Right. <laughs> and so... That's a thing that I've had trouble with right now. I could this conversation makes it clear that we're both in therapy. Um, <laughs> because we're the, yeah. it's like the, you're you're valid. Everything your you're your is feelings valid. are valid. What you're and is true. It's gonna be okay. You don't love the new puppy any the old puppy any less. You just have less time for the old puppy. Yeah. And it's really just a matter of like being all three partners have to talk. Right. It's and not just a one on one and a one on two. Yeah. It's a one on one two. You know, like you're you're talking to everybody at the same time. It, it's important okay. to keep the lines of communication open with all the partners because polyamory is loving multiple people. So if you're loving all the people in the relationship, all those people have to communicate together. Do you need your 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 partners? Who's like who's the center focus on the thing? Because you need your partners to then be in love with your other partners. You'd, if you're doing, if it's polyamory and that is how, you know, and I don't feel like you, you go into polyamory saying, I'm going to love both of my partners because that's not something that you just decide right away. It's something that develops over time. Right. So I think it's one of those things that, you know, relationships change as we get older and as we grow and as we change within the relationship and it may or may not be something you start out with, but it could be something you evolve into. And it's okay to change relationships over time. You know, it doesn't we have to. We have to. Yeah. It doesn't. It's not human to be the same for the rest of your life. It's gross. I don't know if it's gross. I'm a comedian. I say I say horrible things. You're the um, worst. Here's a question. Why am I here? Here's a question. <laughs> Just Please don't look. Here's a question. Um, here's a slutty question. How many people have you been in love with at the same time? Oh, that's tough. Oh, look at him adjusting, getting ready for this answer. Like you're like a kid in camp, like, eh, what's your <laughs> Um, So before I was in the industry, I had two partners. One, both, one was long distance and one was local. Everybody knew. Everybody knew. Complete line of communication was open. Everybody knew when the play happened, what kind of play, like that kind of stuff. It wasn't like play by play, yeah. but it was also very honest. Yeah. I was in the kink community and the kink lifestyle. I really yeah. enjoyed that. And that is kind of where I felt like I found the most open people. Yeah. And when... It's a Florida I, thing, right? That's, um, that's where yours... No. Yeah. I mean, one partner was in Florida, one yeah. partner was in Chicago. So it was very different. Okay. Because every time I'm in Florida, there was like, there's a kink community here. Yeah. And they don't tell me more things. Like, it's over there. Just go over there. It's over there. Yeah. In, this, in this one warehouse. It's over there. Go over there. <laughs> <laughs> so when I had this relationship, it, you know... I got a certain amount of attention and affection from both people yeah. and where one person's affection may have been a little bit less because it was long distance and it was, you know, trying to f schedule the time to have conversations yeah. and all that, you know, work gets in the way, life gets in the way. Yeah. The other person was there to kind of support me and fulfill right. me, but it wasn't like they were taking the place of that other partner. Right. They were supporting me and and being my my partner and my, my lover during that time. That's a good, that's a good way to understand it too because, so like... When you're long distance, if you miss a phone call, yeah. and you miss the window, it's like the worst it shit. It is, yeah. And it leads to sometimes some like lonely type um, uh, things that you wouldn't otherwise get into. Now you get into because you're like lonely because you missed the window. Right. You're, like, and you're, you're like, like, damn it. I, I guess get out of the thing and you're already in bed and it's like, well, now I don't get to talk to a person. But then the, the flip side is... Is if you do have somebody, you know, there's another support system and you're not doing things that are outside of the relationship, then when you do get that phone call in the window, it's like the most exciting shit. It is, yeah. And the endorphins are the high and yeah. it's exciting. Yeah. But it's also important to communicate in other ways. Like the phone call is important, but it's also the texting and the video chatting and sending sexy videos. Like there's so many yeah. different ways to communicate. And I think with like it, lately, like in the last 10 years, I would say it's been much more accepted 
to send sexy videos and to sext and to do all these other types of communication yeah. that are also really important because yeah, when you have that phone call, it's a it's a phone call interaction, but it might not it might just be like catching up on the week because you haven't gotten to talk about that. Right. And then where do you have the sexy time with that person? That's, that then that actually is difficult because you're like oh I fucking you're like complaining about you know for me my landlord right yeah you're, you're complaining like, about all the things that happen in life and yeah. work and all that I'm kind like, of stuff. My families and like now I just realized some therapy that like oh I have a horrible relationship with my parents and then I'm like but also send me your pussy please. Um, right. It is. And it's a lot to have in one hour conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be like, oh, I'm having such a struggle talking about my family, yeah. but also I need to see your feet and yeah. your asshole. <laughs> and I love those freckles. Like, that's part of it. Yeah. It, it is weird. And then and then the the texting, the the, the stuff you're talking about, the, the um, texting and video and all the, the long distance, the technological sex yeah. stuff. Text, text. You have to, um, you have to have chemistry there too, because like, yeah. I'll, I'll be with somebody who... Like doesn't want to send me masturbation videos, and I'm like, right, because I'm, not everybody's need... so comfortable with yeah. seeing themselves on camera. And like, but it's like, but I need it. I need it from you, and and um, so that chemistry has become something recently that's yeah. now in play. Because you have the best sex, and then they don't want to send you pictures, and you're like, well, I don't understand. Um, but you gotta think though. Also, there are a lot of there's a lot of stigma around sending that kind of stuff sure. because that stuff gets leaked. And maybe that person's really worried yeah. about potential leaking of so, that information. Here's a good. I used to do the thing where it's like pay for your porn. Uh, I, I should I should start doing this thing now. Guys are awful. Stop. Can we stop being awful? Can we decide together to stop being awful? <laughs> like there's so many people that are like, uh, if I send you this, can you not show it I to anybody? Like I was like, I would even never. Deeper into this couch with every. Uh, that'd be great if just by the end we're just wearing the couch. We're just in the couch, and then we're just like down couch. here on the on the yeah. video. We're just like, well, yeah. it's been great talking to you guys. Balls, yeah, I have horrible <laughs> postures. So. Let me just adjust a little bit. So I'm the cut this out of the video too. Okay. Well, not, no, I'm not, I don't edit. I don't talk about. Um, I'll edit for you. Okay, great. That's that is what I need. I do. The 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 people on your side of the industry, I really do need to. We do need to team team up mm -hmm. and like. Because people are editing, people are doing things, and that's stuff that I need to figure out how to build. One of the things I thought I could cheat um, by doing this podcast is like, oh, it's more people have a shit ton of followers. I'll just get their followers. And just take it back off. And of it's them. like I really didn't understand. I know. That like I'm never gonna take. Because my followers are still mine. They're just gonna yeah, come watch everything. Yeah, thing. Right. I'm never gonna take whoever's. Let's use yours. Your phone. Because what you're doing, that's what. And it's gotten even tighter yeah. recently because of TikTok and all the things. It's like mm -hmm. when TikTok first came out, it was like, oh, all I do is videos where I throw eggs at my wall. And then that's it. And then if you did a different video, they're like, like what the fuck is what this? What is this? Yeah, yeah. So for a long time, I, like, comedians were trying to do we'd do three. So we, so we would do, well, this is three of, like, doing comedy, and this is three of, like, me at home cooking, and here's three of my puppy. And then eventually, like, TikTok really made it. So it was just like, no, just just, just put stand-up videos up. That's the whole page. If you want to do something else, make another page. Yeah. Which made it strange. But it makes me understand the whole thing more. Right? Like... What's the what's the kryptonite post that you could put up that we're like you're not gonna get the same uh, okay. likes? Anything without a photo or a video. Yeah. Like if I'm just like having a great time in the city, people are like like. Fuck off. <laughs> How yeah, but if I but if I post a picture of like look at all this lingerie I bought in the yeah. city, they're like can't wait to see you take uh, it off. <laughs> what is the and so girls who have specific features, mm -hmm. same thing like that that specific feature will get all the likes and then they'll be like here's my belly and we're like fuck you. Yeah. Um, what's face. your yeah what's your what's your best one what's your best feature on 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 the internet? Honestly, I hate to say this because it's gonna sound so cliche, but people no. love my smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say something different. People love my smile. Okay. I mean, they love the titties too, and maybe it's because the titties and the smile are often together. We're in a we're in the weirdest period of, of porn where um, we know more about our, our porn stars than we ever have. Yeah. And even when I started this podcast, that wasn't as yeah, true. Yeah, that's absolutely and people true. People were like cut off, and they're like, "Oh, my name, and I was done, and what thing, yeah, and I don't yeah. where I'm at." Um, we're at that place where because of and, and OnlyFans, Twitter, and all the things like OnlyFans has really made it so that we are accessible and we can have relationships with our fans and. And, and now I know enough about my person that, like, what they're doing and what they shouldn't do, right? So before it was, like, you do mainstream and you just do whatever the scene is. Yeah. Pizza guy, whatever, the cliche <laughs> ones. And then you don't know anything about that person. And so what I was doing with porn, I don't know if I ever told you this, I was, like, putting my own shit on the porn star. And, like, in my head I think I was, like, making her my girlfriend or whoever I needed. Yeah. And so then I started meeting porn stars and I was like, oh, it's completely different than whatever I did there. Mm -hmm. And so I, I got weirded out about my own shit. Of like why like and is it creepy now to like 
meet somebody and still be their fan and then jerk off to the person that they really are. That seems creepier to me. No, I think that's more genuine. I know, that's why you're here. But, but that was my, my shit. Guess, yeah, that's your old bag. Because I was like, like, I'd be, like, whatever was going wrong in my life, like, in a relationship or whatever, what I needed sexually, I would just mm-hmm. find that on the porn thing. Mm-hmm. And, it would and just, porn's great for that. Absolutely. But then when you, when you meet that person in person, then it's like, oh, you're not, you were, like, it's, you're not it's the an thing act. I it's, yeah. a, it's, it's a performance. But not even as much as that, as I was doing an extra step where I was just putting my own stuff in there. So, like, the performance is one step, but then there's the other step where it's like, oh, you look like the girl who broke up with oh, me. Oh, yeah, no, don't do that. Right. No, you so that's the shit I was doing with porn. That was my relationship with porn that was odd. Yeah, um, 100%. And now... I would say you're not alone in that. For sure. You know, hundreds of people now we can are jerk off that. to the person that they really are. We can jerk and off to their heart. Whole, and that's kind of a whole different, like, connection, right? And it really is. And that's, and that's what drives, I think, a lot of those sales, too. For sure, yeah, being able to communicate with somebody and, and even, you know, I did a, over a thousand custom videos for my fans last yeah. year and getting to fulfill their fantasy. So just and exactly, three a day? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> how, do you, how do you set that up? Because this, this is the thing that I found destructive um, during this period of time uh, when the pandemic went in. Everybody just thinks that they can sell foot pics and that they're going to make rent. And yeah. I'm like, and I get mad and I'm like, I'm like, do you have any idea, like... How much of a full time job this is? Such a full time job. You can't just throw up three foot pictures. right now. It's just in this fucking couch. Right. <laughs> it's just so nice. It's not my picture. But yes. Yeah, oh, help my foot come out of prison. Yeah. That so, would be the caption. <laughs> so what? What can is we your? We adjust for the seventy at the time. What is your? Can we make this? Can we somehow make this couch more comfortable? No, it's it's just that I think this part is like broken in here. Oncomfycouch.com. That could be a whole. That could be a whole thing. And it's just you trying to sit on the couch. The entire time, just adjusting fed, being awkward. Fed it up. <laughs> what's your What's your real schedule do that it takes to be successful in OnlyFans? Um, Tell people the real thing. So I, I'm online responding to messages and taking custom orders and you know uploading my feed and that, those types of like maintenance things. Probably, I it's definitely seven days a week. But I, I try to keep some kind of hours because I'm not always available. Like yeah. I sleep too, and if the OnlyFans girl you're talking to seems like she doesn't sleep, it's not her. You're right. And she's right. not. She's not I real. Heard, yeah, I don't want to blow this up, but they're, yeah, they're they're responders. Yeah. Yeah, and and m- most people know that and they're yeah. aware of that, and Reddit has made it very very known that, is that that's right? what it is. Yeah. That there's just like a person ready to go. Yeah, and it's just that's disingenuous to me. I like to connect with my fans in a real level. So yeah. For me, I like to just. Keep, you know, like, I wake, whenever I wake up, I wake up my OnlyFans, right. and then I talk about all that and um, talk, respond to messages for overnight, and because, you know, people are in different time zones, and I understand right. that. I, there are some people I'll never be able to talk to online. Yes. Just like, just like somebody might poop at a certain time. I get horny at a certain time of night. <laughs> and some people you'll just never be able to have a live conversation with because they're just seven hours ahead of you, yeah. and it's a different time zone. So, um, you know, I work from seven or eight until... And, yeah, so you you're know, working 14 hours a day. And it's not like I'm sitting at the computer responding, like, a, you know, for 14 hours. It's yeah. not, you know, there, there are breaks within that. Take, you know, take sure, time. Sure, 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 sure. same thing with other platforms like Sex Panther. And but it's so much work. It is a lot of work. It's, re- it's a real it's, profession. It's absolutely more than a real profession. Yeah. I feel like we put in more hours because then I'm also on set. And the times that right. I'm on set, then I'm on set and I'm doing double duty on OnlyFans trying to talk to everybody and be like, hey guys, I'm on set, like sending out sexy pictures from set. Is anybody doing that video? Video? I like that video where where it's like, so it's behind the scenes, but it's also like you're doing you're doing a scene and you get a break and then, and then somebody just hands you a cell phone and then you got a text... Your fans, yeah. And then they hand you another the real cell BTS. phone, and then you take a picture of your pussy, and yeah. then you and they hand you a different cell phone, and then you're sending like whatever, like another arm phone. <laughs> right. <laughs> I want to see that content because that makes me. I think that would be a lot of fun because that's like the true reality of yeah. it. Because I have two phones, one for Sex Panther, because I get so many texts a day that it would be unmanageable if I got them into my real phone. Right. And then my real phone, I'll take all the sexy pictures on, and then you know, their iPhone so I can just airdrop them to each other yeah. and send out the photos to my fans, yeah. which is awesome. But it's it's a lot of fucking work. And so when I do take two weeks off, it's like I kind of fall off the map and yeah. I fall, you know, like everything falls off because if I'm not doing it, nobody else is doing but it. But you can time, but there's time posts now, right? So you can even do that. Sure, sure. Yeah. But, and, and that's, 
Yes, to a certain point, but then the, I come home after two weeks and there are a thousand messages yeah. on OnlyFans because yeah. I haven't actually talked to anybody for right. two weeks. Right. So it's it's tricky in that regard, but I feel like the management of it, I also don't feel like I have so many fans that I have to have somebody else doing it. Do you know, do you have like a number? How does this work? For people that like, that like for really, no, no, like for people that are like really successful at mm -hmm. the entertainment in general, the, like I was hanging out with a buddy who's like super, um, like like pertinent in like South Africa and I, we were just talking and I was like yeah because you have 112 you have, I go because you have 100, 100, 100,000 followers he goes 112 and he's like what 112, 112 but 112. NBD 112 so like and he knows how many people like live in each of the countries that he's like putting content out in are you like down to that thing where you like you like know how many people are actively giving you support in, in the, the way of funds in any given month like not really I don't really look at it like that because if I'm if I'm chatting with you on a platform, it's a pay to play chat yeah. platform. So Sex Panther, OnlyFans, Loyal Fans, those types of places. It's that's where I spend most of my time yeah. because it's you know that's where I make the most of my money. But yeah. it's also the place where the fans value me the most and because they understand that it's pay to play and they're willing to do that because yeah. they just want to support me and they love me and they are excited to see my new content. Sure, sure. Um. So like Twitter DMs aren't it. Instagram, if I'm DMing you on Instagram, it ain't me. Sorry, oh, sorry to burst your bubble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my only Instagram is <gasps> Beyond Good. Expectations. Yeah, you've had a problem with the Instagram thing. I have. I'm on my fifth one. Yeah. I'm not alone in that. How? Many, no, many performers sure. have had way worse than me. I've honestly just stopped posting on Instagram, which is why I still keep my account. Right. Well, so here's That's what... fucked up. Here's what... Here's what I've seen since we're doing this thing. What do we say? Five years, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, first, it was... If you're if you're like under a certain number of followers and you do something, you're like the first to go. Mm. Then they started um, the people were hacking accounts. That was like a that's phase. a big thing. Yeah, hacking was a big thing. Then it became you could have a million followers, and you're like the reason why Instagram exists. And then they'll still take your account down. Mm -hmm. And then recently they've just stopped telling people why. Yeah, that's the new thing, and like it's really their prerogative, which is kind of fucked up, but. You know, if you break the terms of service, they can say you broke it for whatever reason, and they don't really have to give you your account back. Right. And with Twitter, if you make a backup account that's technically an illegal or against the terms of service, uh, you're you not supposed it. to have multiple accounts. Oh. So if you get banned off Twitter, and then you get you make another account, and you're like, okay, delete it at 145,000. Like that's just more ammo for them to delete you again oh, because it's against that. the terms of service to have multiple accounts promoting the same thing. So I, I have a... why somebody writes related 140,000 just to be like because that's in because their head? The, no because they want people to be like it's not a thousand follower account yeah. I had this many followers and I'm real and I'm yes so I don't know for me I have two accounts on Twitter one is to promote my sex doll one is to promote me and I very clearly state this is an account promoting the sex doll modeled after Lexi Luna XOXO yeah. which is my Twitter handle and <laughs> crush it I don't even need to Shameless be here plugs, yeah. <laughs> you just, like Bill Burr's got his own thing just keep your own party. I don't even need to be here and, and the other account is my actual porn account which I've had since 2016 so it's really just a matter of following the terms of service to, yeah. to the T and if you're making a backup account for your main Twitter then you're just breaking the terms and you can get right. both of those accounts deleted and then also okay. if you make a backup account then, then you can't get verified because you can find another you Right? Yeah, I don't know how that works. I've not been verified, and I've tried many times. It's crazy. And they just keep fucking denying. It's crazy. Uh, I don't. Okay, so tell me. About, let's talk about the sex doll. Okay. I don't know how does this pro how does this process take place? How far are you into it? And then, um, what do I what do I get? Tell me the whole. Thing. I don't know how to. Start. Okay, so the sex doll is released. Um, we started this in gosh, April of twenty twenty. So like during the pandemic, like right. height of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, a company reached out to me, Sex Doll Canada, and they partner with WM Doll in China. And basically, they I went to the studio uh, to get 3D scanned. Okay. So there were. Oh, you didn't have to get molded. No, so because the, shipping the molds to China, it's very likely that they'll break. Yeah. So we decided to go with the 3D scan and instead it's of. Smarter. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's technology. They're going to figure it out. They got sure. The, it's like, how long ago the hologram of Tupac? We're good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So they, there were like 150 cameras, DSLRs, in this cage, and you stand in the cage, and they all like turn on, and it's like this, like, it looks like 100 
bats are looking at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like look at you at once. And uh, so they turn off all the Did lights. You get camera shy because there's too many. Like, what's the number of the? No, camera what's the number of cameras <laughs> in your face? That yeah. So you stand. After Forty. I get uncomfortable. <laughs> you stand in the cage and you do the face facial expression that you want the doll to have because that's kind of what it's gonna be. So I kind of did this like face. Yeah. And because you need you you can't close your mouth. No, right, because you, the dick's got to It go has in to there. be. Thank you for explaining it. And it's kind of... Because the, the dick yeah. has to go in there. It has to go in there. <laughs> so they take an image at the same time, and then they put it into the computer, and the computer creates a composite image, and it, it's a basically a full 360 view of you. Once once you get that, do you see the thing, and then do you get the opportunity to like be like, hey, that's not... I don't want my... I don't want my, like armpit to look like that or whatever like do you get that um not really because you. it's it's you're more standing like you're standing like the doll would stand yeah. so it's not like an awkward weird thing and they're not and they can't fuck it up because it's a picture right and the, so that's like the general image they use to kind of create the negative mold of the doll yeah. and then you can go in and you know adjust certain things and it's like okay well the picture didn't really tra like transfer right. the image the way that i that move it your, is. Move your belly button up three inches. Yeah, different things like that. You know, it's like, oh, this boob looks bigger, but that's just maybe because I was slightly shifted towards the yeah. camera this way. So there were a little bit of adjustments okay. that were made through that, and then, um, and then we just went through different models, and every time we would make an adjustment, and you know, you're communicating with with the WM doll in China, so there's a little bit of a, a excuse me, a little bit of a language barrier. Sure. So sometimes I would go into Photoshop and like circle things and, and move and show them how to make the adjustment. And um, and now, you know, this doll looks <laughs> very much like me. Yeah. And I'm very pleased with it. I think that it looks fantastic. How it, many other people are part of the, like the, like your, your, I don't know, your cell of, how many other people are, are have a have a doll in the same company? Like, in the same like, company, none. Real Doll is the probably person. the biggest competitor, yeah. and Real Doll has has stars like Stormy Daniels, Asa Akira. But you're the you're the lead spokesperson for this whole thing. For this particular one. company, yeah. I'm the only porn star they Did have. Did you get to feel like? Um, but what do they make otherwise? They just make they, make, they make sex whatever. dolls of you know just generic sex yeah. dolls. Um, did you get to like feel the? Did you get to decide what your skin like? No, it's all TPE like? material. It's all TPE material, and it's basically, you know, like the like, I got to tell them my breast size, yeah. and then they made that size of breast. Yeah. So it wasn't like I got to decide how soft or firm right. it was. Do you, and you have one. I have one. Do you, and I, it's, yeah, I'm gonna be getting a second one. Soon. Is it ex like it when it you is, put it next to you? It is my height. It's exactly. It looks just like me, and that's one of the unique things about it is it does weigh 117 pounds, so it is. Right. It's a little bit less than my weight, but yeah. obviously, like they take some of the weight out of the legs and knees and stuff like that, so that you can transport hurt. her. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nobody get it hurt. Also, right. also, because that's a lot of weight to lift on your own. Like you're fucking this thing. Yeah, you have yeah. to move her around. Yeah. She's got a steel skeleton. I'm 39. I haven't tried to do standing 69 in a long time. I don't know if I still got it. You know what I mean? Well, um, yeah. You can put her on her head, or just I, pop but, her head off. But and I, put her that on was her head. one of my moves. That was one of my like early sex moves Aww. to impress people. <laughs> Was the standing sixty nine? It's flipping over and it's like, yeah. The God, thing that it. really impresses girls is you being able to successfully make them come with your tongue. <laughs> That's the real impressive That's fair. part. So don't worry about the crazy acts. Just worry about like being really good at your thing. That's fair. Um, I'm trying to think what other weird sex doll questions to ask you. I like. Uh, let this. me tell you some things. Please, let me let me guide please, you in this please, because please, I've recently I'll done see. my very first porno with the doll. You did. I did a custom video for a fan and. We, Lucas Frost, who is a fantastic male performer, came over and uh, basically helped me fuck this doll. But he, so there was like this voiceover part where I'm talking as though I'm trapped in the doll. Yeah. And then um, when he comes inside me, I come to life. And then I'm Lexi uh... Luna. So the doll, the thing that is very strange is when you fuck her mouth, her eyes bulge because... You know, Lucas has, is very well endowed. There's only so much material. There's only so much space in that skull. Right. And, you know, like, it's a tube in yeah. the mouth, so you're fucking her and her eyes go... <laughs> and it's kind of creepy, but it's also really comical because, yeah. of course, that's what's going to happen because it's just TV. And, and as and as people start to use the thing, that'll become part of what's... what's that's the good. reality. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the reality and of, like, I want people to see what this doll looks like when it's actually being fucked. I'm not trying to hide anything from it. Yeah. There are sleeves you can put in the vagina so you, it's easier to clean. Yeah, we also, by the way, we love... Men love to think that our that our penises can destroy things. For sure. It's like our favorite thing. This is very much going to yeah. appease that yeah, yeah, side yeah. of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just tore the doll up. 
I like fucked her skull. Yeah. Her <laughs> eyes popped out of her head. Her she nose. I broke her nose from she inside of her head. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love that. Um, wait, so this is one, so you're not on you're not on camera at the same time? No, we're not. So I already started going to you licking like, the doll's pussy? No. <laughs> thank you. I'm there now. Like now I'm thank there. you. No, I'm I'm too I'm too like like um like I the thing that I've been saying um, recently, which is weird, is like I wish there like when I'm doing something something, like I wish there was another me. So that I like so that he could come fuck you on the other side. <laughs> so that's They also have male sex dolls. For sure, but I'm saying like like you sta- stacking you with a bunch of yous seems amazing. That does seem especially to cool. your fans. Just like how many of yous can we get in there? Yeah. I just, am I just am I writing? Oh, I dig it. Am I keep right? Going, keep going. Keep going. Yeah, I gotta. I, I'm I, taking mental I notes. Get right writing credit on all this. Um, I'm gonna put written by Dan Freeland. Yeah, I mean, well, I would love to write one by the way, because I, so I wrote the um the 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 the, the show here. Um, uh, um, not X Mix. Uh, Exotica. What's the exotic the Exotica? Um, I don't know what I can think of it. Yeah, the um the award show. Um, the award show that they do in New Jersey. When I need work, so I don't have them. Anyway, there's a show, and I wrote the, and I wrote the show, and it was so much fun to write that stuff, to write to that. So I, I, I do think, I do think it would be fun that I could write um, porn scripts. Yeah. I think that'd be a fun uh, way to. Go. I can hook you up with some of that. Are you, by the way, you said before, so you have where your career's gonna go? Are you directing? Are you? Is that your plan? Um, I don't, is that the soft I don't know if it is my plan. You yeah. know, I don't know if I really have that in me. I like coming up with the ideas. But I also, I'm more of like a model coach, I think. Okay. Where I help model, new models learn how to move their bodies and show them how to pose and, and how to fuck the, the way that makes their body look like the way that you see veteran porn stars. Okay, so I'm just starting. I think I'm hot shit. I'm a hot little um, four foot eleven girl. Right. Um, I, I want to show you how to bend that like how to arch your back yeah. just the right way and what that feels like in sex because it's totally different than the way you normally have sex. Yeah. And the way you normally have sex isn't camera friendly, you know? Explain that. Being able to o- know when to open up, how to turn onto your side for missionary, all the different ways that makes makes it easy for producers and directors to work with you because you're, you know, you kind of understand how your body works and how it moves and where to move so that the camera can see. Because you have to think the camera always has to see all the penetration. Yeah. And, you know, you always want to have your hands doing something, you're pinching your nipples, rubbing your clit, touching the guy, being involved in the Don't scene fully. Don't let your hands be Yeah, empty. like, what are these hands that I have? And it's just those those little things that you learn, you'll learn it over a couple of years, yeah. but if you can get that head start and really know it from the beginning, I feel like you can really advance your career. A and you faster. can charge a person for this. I mean, I guess I could, but I would more probably charge a company to be a model like Lee's Got on, it. in that capacity. You just, you just, you just, you're on set, or you? What, what, what would that role look like if you charged a company? You're on set, or you meet with? I'd girl probably beforehand. be on set, maybe be on set, maybe meet beforehand. I, you know, I really don't know. I don't think there's really anybody that's doing anything like this Turn right now. Turn your hips. <laughs> Perfect. Right. But and that sounds like a director. Kind of, but you know, the director is also looking at the shot and making yeah. sure the background's good and making sure that the talent are going to be land in the spot that they sure. need to land. There's a lot more going on, and it's also a lot easier for a female to tell another female, sure. "Hey, if you just do this, it helps a lot more, and it's far less comfortable, but it's going to, yeah. you know, this is what it, this is what it's supposed to feel like." Because having a male director tell you. Um, right. Oh, honey, can't you just open up your leg a little bit more? Like, right. no, she really can't, right. <laughs> you know? Right. And, you know, there are companies that have model liaisons in that capacity, but they're more for, you know, making sure that the consent is there and that type of thing, not so much about teaching the model how to pose her body. Okay. Make sure the consent is there. So, yeah, there's been some controversies recently with old, with people that were at the beginning of the industry and people that are new in the industry. Mm-hmm. People new in the industry were able to take down some people old in the industry because they're like, I would not do that. The thing on the paper that we said we're doing, we're doing that. Right. Um, do you think, in the amount of time that you've been in the industry, that um, like clear consent has has changed at all, or did you come in at a time when that's that was like a very important specific thing? Right. I kind of came in at a time right before clear consent was discussed 
on camera, okay. recorded, yeah. and it was all, you know, everybody signed a checklist, and yeah. you went through an actual checklist and talked, like, I don't do anal, it's okay if you lick my ass, but don't put anything in my ass, right. you know, and all those pieces are really important, but I, I came into the industry just before that, and I feel like that really started after, like, in and after the pandemic, yeah. where a lot of people were like, oh, we've kind of been doing models dirty, and not sure. giving due diligence, and not making sure that they feel, feel safe on set, right. so I've seen a lot of companies shift towards doing consent checklists and you you know you're neck you're with your male partner and with the director all right there and you're recording it so everybody has you know proof that the conversation happened yeah. and if something were to happen later it's like well this is what was agreed to on the consent checklist even though consent is in the moment yeah. if we say and at the end they'll say if at any time during this video you feel like you you said yes to something, but you no longer want to do it. It's perfectly fine. Okay. Just you know, say something. What if you what if the, what if you do it and it's just not going the way you want? Yeah, just yell cut. And, you can say, and everybody you can, like, makes say you feel it. super yeah. yes, safe for it, cut, right, whatever. And then you can't and then you can't air it. Right, and they'll edit around that, and yeah. we'll have a conversation. You know, we'll stop the filming, yeah. and we'll have a conversation about what to do next and where right. you want to go from here. But I I started in an area in an era where that really wasn't super discussed yeah. but I came in at 26 and I was very like these are my limits and I will not go past it sure now I know a lot of people don't didn't have the power to do that so well, I feel very fortunate in my age and my ability to say those things well because because the people came in strong off of like self camming mm -hmm. when you got here or at least that's my perception I can't speak to that specifically but that seems to be my perception and that wasn't what it was before so then like you self camming you, you make all the decisions so yeah. then now you're like okay no I'm just not comfortable with that and then before it was like well you don't want to do that then we'll just find another girl mm -hmm. um, right. and so yeah it was saying? a little bit of a it was a little bit of like a threat like oh well if you don't want to do it we'll just find somebody find else somebody do it. and that's not really the way it goes anymore yeah and not in the big companies I know that these type of non-consensual things still happen in the like person-to-person -person interaction, sure. peer to peer. Well, let me go. Let me go a step further. And this this bothered me. I was doing an interview recently, and they pitched me as a person who might have a podcast about porn. And these men who are older than me were like convinced that porn um, is linked to like sex trafficking, and I could not explain to them how not much that represents porn now mm -hmm. and and that was frustrating for me because and then that's what i feel like there's 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 still some old ideas around about coercion and about like this lack of consent and so it's like i think a lot of um weirdly enough sex positivity in the in the non-porn space doesn't cross over because it's a, for some reason they think that like if you're sex positive like in the streets that's different than what's happening in porn mm -hmm. And I don't know how to bridge these spaces. And this yeah. is, this has been a thing for me that I'm trying to understand. Because, like, with people being sex positive and open, um, somehow porn is getting missed. Yeah. And, you know, I think that has a lot to do with certain New York Times articles that have been written about how, you know, Pornhub is the problem. Right? Is that right? There, I didn't you, see that there's, a, there's an article in the New York Times I'll tell you about when we're done here. Yeah. And, uh, well, so now that's three problematic New York Times articles recently. Oh yeah, New York the one, Times is a problem. The one that I the one that I had with Polly, mm -hmm. uh, I saw another one that was about Findom. It wasn't about Findom. It was a girl selling pictures of her feet, and God bless her. But that's not Findom. That's not Findom. And then whatever the Pornhub one. Um, so th no one is informed, and no one is the. Um, and no one is asking us to be like. Sure. They're not trying to find the information. Sure. They're That's just fair. making it. They're they're finding people in the industry who've either left the industry in a poor in a poor way where they were not happy and they didn't like what happened. Right. Um, so of course they're not going to say positive things about the industry. Right. But they're also not reaching out to the heavy hitters in the industry to get a statement or to get any kind of insight. They're not actually doing the journalistic work. They're just right. making assumptions based on people's poor experiences. And, and and you can find a poor experience in any industry. It's right. not just us. So it's one of those things where it's like, well, are you going to do your due diligence or right. are you just going to take the easy route and write this article and bash us because you know you've got different religious organizations who are willing to support you we are still a very very puritanical place and it, it kind of blows my mind yeah. yeah i've had i've lost gigs because of um sitting on a couch talking to a porn star it's, yeah it's so it ridiculous yeah, yeah they're like do you do porn i'm like no and i explain the thing and they're like well we can't have you and it's like it's a very strange but i get it i get i get that that's a thing that still controls our country and the th yeah. to think that it doesn't um, yeah, I mean it's still really controlling the world. Spain just recently is de is recriminalizing sex work. Is that right? Yeah. 
So what are hot places to, to film outside of the U.S.? Never done it. Never? I wouldn't do it. It's you wouldn't It's not do it. worth it to me. It's not worth potentially getting caught. I don't know what the laws are in other countries right. regarding that kind of thing, and I don't want to end up in jail in another country and have to deal with all that mess. It's just not worth it. There was an article I read about girls, I think, in Dubai taking nude photos on their balcony with the That's Dubai scary landscape. Place. It's a scary place. What are you doing? Like, scary. don't. It's not worth yeah. the fucking photos. You have to photos. get a license to drink alcohol. That's a scary place. Yeah, like if I can't, if I can't walk down the street at the same pace as a man. I do not need to be shooting porn there. Yeah, yeah, that's a scary space. Um, so, what are, what are, it's interesting because I didn't anticipate working this thing so long and seeing people, um, like, be so successful because mm-hmm. um, I didn't really realize or understand how the thing works. What are, what are upcoming goals? What's, like, a middle goal? And then what's, what's like, your, your within reach, but, but like, long-term goal right now? Okay, upcoming goals. I am going to be making my first, like, full Lexi DVD that I'm going to produce myself. Great. It's not necessarily going to be, like, a full, like, feature type thing where it's, you know, like, moody and all that. It's kind of going to be funny, and yeah. I'm just kind of keeping it light, doing a fun project with and some it's, friends. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a single narrative, or it's, or it's broken into chunks? Um, it'll be an overall narrative, but the scenes won't necessarily, like, it doesn't, it's not all going to happen, like, at the same time. Yeah. Right, so um, I'll give you some more info when we're done, and it'll be. Uh, it, I'm actually trying to to make something for award season okay. regarding it, so Great. I don't want to give yeah, details yeah, yeah. too much. Yeah, sure. um, and then an upcoming goal. So that's the upcoming goal, and then like the middle goal would be. Wait, so how? So how long? So that's going to be between now. Months. Yeah, in six okay. months. And then the the middle goal would be more. Um, social media presence, more yeah. TikTok, doing TikTok. Like, I sure. have an account, but I have not ever talked and, or ticked. I don't know. <laughs> ticked or talked. That's, I've never ticked nor the cutest, talked. That's the cutest I've ever seen. Um, I don't know the, um, how restrictive is TikTok? Um, pretty, but I also am very aware of that. I've, yeah. I've watched all my friends lose their TikTok accounts. Okay. And, you know, I'm, I really just want to show my personality more. I want to yeah. be more open with my fans. I started out that way, and yeah. then I kind of got busy doing scenes and being busy and OnlyFans and pandemic and everything happened. So I want to get back into to the roots and to more just, like, being my per- perky, puppy, fun yeah. self. And do that's what spelling bee content. Do some spelling bee content. <laughs> you know, because that's what my fans really fell in love with in the first place, and that's probably who I am. Yeah. And I just want to get back into doing more of that stuff. And I want to do it in a way that I can actually present it to people, not just have ideas in my head that'll never come to pass. Right. So I actually physically want to make TikToks, and I want to do more on Instagram and go live more yeah. um, on platforms that are not paid, because that's where I'm going to find my next fan. Right. And once you figure out your lane, I guess it's a good way to say yeah, it. Yeah, right. It becomes very easy to yes. make that content. Yes. Because you're always, because now you're thinking in that space. Yeah. And you I don't know, know right about. now, I don't know what TikToks will hit. So and, I'm just going to kind of do a bunch and see what my fans is, love the and most. And that is what's weird is like I've watched, you know, comedians and people in your, your industry try to figure out a thing. And then once something takes hold, you just got to grab onto yeah. it and just let I, it take the ride. I feel like that happened to me a couple of years ago pre-pandemic uh, when I decided to really embrace the, the MILF profile. Yeah. Where you Were know, you trying to fight it before? I wasn't not trying to fight it. I think I wasn't just really, like, I wasn't exploring it enough. Yeah. I had done a few scenes that are MILF-based or, like, old women in charge-based. Yeah. But I wasn't really doing a whole lot. And in Exoticas, I would always, like, try to dress in bikinis like the other girls were doing. Yeah. And that's just not my look. Like, yeah. I'm the one who dresses in pencil skirts and, and, to- and like, MILF tops. Right. So once I started doing that, more fans felt comfortable coming up to me because I wasn't dressed in basically nothing. Right. I was dressed like a woman oh, and I was, sure. I was really portraying it's the way yeah for sure yeah. you know you're going up to this beautiful woman who's wearing two pieces of, of clothing like the, they're all like you know five they know <laughs> they know they're hot you know they're hot and you're and who it's are you? intimidating yeah. for sure yeah you know I mean I was like I was like avoiding making eye contact with people at the conventions yeah. for a couple years and then like somebody like had to walk into the aisle and be like Dan you know, like, yeah. and like, and like, and like, kind of out of her line. And I was like uncomfortable. And yeah. it's like, come hang out. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, it's I'm hard. the same way. I'm, it's very hard. I'm the same way, especially around pretty girls. Like, it's it's hard to be <laughs> like, uh, I'm, I don't want to look at your tits, so I don't know where to look. Yeah. You know, I don't look at your ear. Like, where are we going here? <laughs> and so I noticed that once I started looking more like the way that I looked in the scenes that they saw me in, 
they felt a little more comfortable with yeah. coming up. And even new fans, like I've met far more people because they were like, oh, hi, you're clothed and I feel like I can talk to you yeah. in a real way. Um, not that the girls who are wearing bikinis shouldn't do that. It's I just think totally we their look. I, I think we want to separate a part of it too because we don't want to show up and be, like, I don't want to be, I'm going to be creepy at home. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to seem creepy when I show up. Sure. And I don't think, and I don't think the performers want to be, feel crapped on either so it's like i'm gonna be i'm gonna try to i'm gonna hold it together mm-hmm. and i'm gonna go home and be a and be a pervert um like like the way it's supposed to be right yeah, yeah keep your perversion yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah that was that was kind of like the big realization for me was like be the thing you are yeah it's okay you don't have to create a second persona just be yourself and people will love you and then figure yeah and then figure out how to play that thing and then i market it yeah i mean that, yeah. that that's really just that's just the best advice for anybody who's doing anything, anything. in entertainment. Anything in entertainment. It, it shows. It's so hard to make a second persona. Like, I do not have time to be two people. And it shows, and to, yeah. Yeah, to when you're, When that. you're not doing real stuff, it mm-hmm. shows. And then even not even that, it's like if you, if you break for a second, it confuses people and then they want, mm-hmm. they like don't feel like it's real and then it's The disingen- disingenuous part yeah. is really the thing that I always try to stay away from. I like connecting with people even if it's for a little bit of time on set or whatever it is. I just like I like to, to take a piece of you with me. Yeah. And like even this is yeah. you know like we haven't talked in a while and like you've been through so much and I've been through so much. Yeah. Like we've all been through it yeah. and so it's just like getting to reconnect just feels like you know we're like being friends again yeah. and just being that that human piece is really important. Yes. And and again because of my weird relationship with porn, which has changed, uh, I, I I just didn't. I didn't understand that. And I understand, I didn't understand, it's just interesting to see the way people, and the way the thing has evolved and the way people utilize porn as part of their relationships, part of the things that they, that they sure. like, um, and then maybe even like from a poly perspective, part of like getting, um, quenching a thirst that they might not be able to quench otherwise in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, those are all important things. You know what's a piece that I didn't realize recently? I don't know if this is important to say on, I don't know if I should say this. I think there's a lot of people that, um, I think most people don't get to fuck who they want to fuck. Mm, and that's true. like a big part of who we are as people. I think so. Um, and for a myriad of reasons. And so I was operating under the idea as an arrogant male that like I just get to like like everybody that I've been with is just like because that's how I wanted them. But it's like it's not it's got nothing to do with it. And also like the older I get and the more I like look mortality in the face, it's like, you know, uh, I'm going to be an old creepy man at some point. For sure. And so feeding that little thing and then also like like normalizing it and like shrinking the gap between like being able to get something and then not not have to be creepy about it Mm -hmm. is going to like make a lot of things better and and the and the more we like destigmatize porn and normalize it like takes out the the worst parts on either end yeah if that happens with anything you're destigmatizing right And once you shine a light on it, like it's no longer a scary thing. Yeah, and we're in this weird, we're this we're in, we're in this fun space where we're finally like telling people to like accept and have the sex they're supposed to have. Whereas before it was like, and both are still fun. Where you're like like having the sex you're not supposed to have is fun. Like that's what's fun about sex is that it's like it's wrong. Yeah, the but then wrong. now it's fun that it's right. Yeah. And the two are fighting, and I don't know who's gonna win. I don't think either one has to win. I think they both have a place to exist that's in the porn. Like, that's the thing about porn. It gives a space for everything, and especially with being able to access porn so much easier these days, you can find your thing, whatever it is. Yeah. Just, and, it, it, and hundreds of girls have done it. Yeah. Or hundreds of people have displayed that. And it, it, again, takes away but also adds the taboo factor, right? Yeah. It, it takes it away from the society piece, but it also really adds it into your own. You know, like how, how taboo is taboo for you, it's different for every person. Right. So it, it's one of those things that makes it really, like once you shine a light on something, it makes it available, accessible, and consensual and sane and happy and a positive experience. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Sexy People Podcast. Wherever you're hearing us, we're on The Other Thing. If you're on Google, we're on Apple, et cetera, et cetera. Everywhere that you are, we are. And if you switch platforms, we'll be there too. This is the Sexy People Podcast. This is part one of my episode with Lexi Luna. Part two will come back next week. Uh, You can pick up with our chat there. 
Thank you so much for listening. Please follow her, pay for her porn and all the things. And we will see you and hear you and you'll hear us next week for part two.